This is the Wheel of Time Spoilers Podcast. Your hosts are Seth Jacobson and Patrick Heiler. Hi, I'm Seth. And I'm Patrick. Um, do we want to... Daniel, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Sure. I Daniel. am Daniel Green, or Green Daniel today. Uh, <laughs> I am a YouTuber. I have a little channel here where I love talking about Wheel of Time and fantasy in general. Probably steering more forward towards my Wheel of Time roots soon. Uh, it's been an amazing community, and now I'm here for my first ever Jordan Con, and it's been the best convention I've been to, hands down. Woo! Yeah. 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 Okay, well, Jen's going to make me go first. Um, I'm Jess, your Amerlin Seat from the White Tower Podcast. Um, oh! <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, first Jordan Con, first panel ever. Uh, it's very cool. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Jen, I'm the Keeper of the Chronicles from the White Tower Podcast, so uh, Jess pretty much keeps me aligned. We have a lot of fun. Um, uh, we talk about Wheel of Time, so our setup is pretty much we do a couple chapters of a synapsis, and then we kind of discuss how we feel about uh, the books. We just started pretty recently. Um, we're going, it's spoiler free, so for those of you that haven't you know, finished all the books, there's not going to be a lot of spoilers, just a lot of fun um, if you haven't listened. And... My first Jordan Con too, and you guys are amazing. This crowd is like the community is real. So yeah, thank it's you for having us. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Patrick from Wheel of Time Spoilers podcast. Um, <laughs> well, they already know who I am. <laughs> um, and I guess I uh, I'll just. So we do something similar to what White Tower is doing, where we walk through the series chapter by chapter, but it's all spoilers. So it's, in, it's in the name, but you'd be surprised. A lot of people do ask, like, are there spoilers in the White <laughs> <laughs> um, And that's, that's the whole point. Seriously, we get that question a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just evolved. And Seth and I were friends for many, many years, and um, sitting in pubs, you get to drink three, and you just start talking about the Wheel of Time. Like, have you ever considered this thing, you know? And or how many um, little little cookie crumbs are like in the first couple of chapters? And so we got this idea to walk all the way through and just try try to explain everything as we move through. That was after a few more beers. <laughs> <laughs> the more we drank, the more we're like, we should do a podcast. I'm sure that'll be, that'll work out great. <laughs> no, because I always say like I want to do a podcast so I wouldn't have to actually look people in the face when I talk to them, and I completely failed because um, I'm really looking at you folks. And, and um, I'm trying not to. So, <laughs> but I want to say I'm, I'm Seth Jacobson. I do the Wheel of Time Spoilers podcast. Um, I've got a fan section out there. <laughs> Y'all are awesome. Thank you everybody for showing up to the con this year. Yeah. Um, uh, just a couple of little things. Uh, uh, we are kind of working on a, a spoiler con on the West Coast. Uh, I'm going to shout that out. Um, if you're if you're a West Coast person, it's hard to get out of here sometimes, and so we want to sit around and talk about the Wheel of Time, and we're doing it in September, so it's like six months away. Just throwing that out there. Um, uh, but yeah, we've been doing this for two years, and uh, it's been just a ton of fun, and it took off in a way that we never expected it would, and... I love talking about the Wheel of Time. This Wheel of Time thing really has a strong cult following. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be huge. Someday. Yeah. Someday. Um, and yeah, I, I think that we've seen, you know, everyone here is familiar with Plotcast. He's been around forever. And uh, The Fourth Age and maybe Legendarium. Mm -hmm. A few other little podcasts out there that have, that have touched on Wheel of Time. Um, but we really wanted to take it to another level. And really get into the series and talk about all the little details, and since then there's been a whole host of podcasts that have, that have popped up, and uh, you know, go look, go check them out, because there's so many good ones out there. Yeah. Um, We're all very supportive of each other. Yeah. When, I, when I said mentioned earlier, this community is awesome. Like, we've all worked together previously, um, so we've all kind of, uh, we've, you know, Daniel's worked with us, and we've worked with you guys before, so, um, and that's a really cool thing about it is, is we support each other and lift each other up. Like, we'll even, like, other podcasts will talk about, hey, we're coming with a new episode, and, like, we'll support that and vice versa, so, um, there's not a lot of places where you really see that, where, like, competing people can really build each other up, so, and I think that's, you know, another reason why we're doing this, like, this panel today is because... You know, we just want to include everybody, and if you have any questions, that's what we're here for. Um, you know, if you're thinking of starting something, or if you have any 
thoughts about the Wheel of Time. Like we talk and we've we've even changed each other's opinions on some things. Like repeatedly. repeatedly. <laughs> like I'll come with like a strong thing. Like I really think X was like this in this scene and just will be like, no, absolutely not. And then we'll have discussion and then like our listeners will be like, you know, that's really cool, but have you considered blank? I'm like, oh man, and like we'll talk about that. And that's like No, really- I didn't think about that. <laughs> My mind is blown. (laughs) So that's really good about this community, and I'm sure we all have our own similar experiences with that. So one of my favorite Wheel of Time conversations ever is you guys about how cool it is, a little more relatable than a lot of people give him credit for. Like you get it. Yeah. As you put yourself in his shoes, you're like, oh damn. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That seems to be a unique thing, and just in the Wheel of Time fan community, like I mean, Jordan Khan is. uh, There's. I've never. I haven't met like one jerk. Everyone's like really <laughs> welcoming. You Except for me. introduce. Jenna's <laughs> 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 a huge jerk. Stay away from her. The hugest. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Tom, do you have any questions for us? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 so, I, I actually want to ask who out there uh, has, like wants to create audio content, video content. Twitter content, is that something anyone out there is interested in? Is that a passion that you guys have? Yeah. No? Cool. Yeah. We're just fans of you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, we just want to do it. So, to rant over there. Yeah. 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 Well, to, uh, what yeah, are you look working on? I, I, I love this community because it's pushed me to new skills. So, riding a horse, shooting a bow and arrow, wielding a sword, um, and I was accepted immediately as soon as I wanted to be ranked in the series. Everyone's followed me, supported me, liked, tweeted, and it's been amazing. I was like, I have to show up to this con and meet these people. And exactly how it was on Twitter and Instagram, it's been here. I didn't know anyone from face to face from yesterday, and now I feel like I have a pocket of friends and friends of everyone, and people are super supportive. And it's just, it's so cool, and I think the series is so perfect for the time and it's so inclusive and women and power and all that is amazing I think yeah. it's so cool to be I know a lot of you have probably been way more of this than I have I'm a little new yeah. but I feel like I'm hitting the crest of the wave and it's about to take over and it's going to be really fun to be a part of this subculture that's going to explode Yeah, and that's cool like the coolest there, thing for me to be a part of something that's going to be big We've already seen that, like, and it will all share each other's opinions because now the TV shows come out, like, what's your casting choices? And huh. they're like, okay, well, this actor, well, this actor. And, like, everybody's like, no, that would be a really cool thing. Like, I think uh, we have a really good Lupita Nyong'o for, for Tulan. We would love her. Uh, she's like, oh, that's perfect. But, you know, there's there's all sorts of different ideas and and um, opinions. So we're, we're ready to hear yours. I mean, how, how do you guys, so how do you, you guys, how do you guys feel about the, like, how the fandom is now going to grow? Like, are are we are we apprehensive? Are we excited? Like, there's like a both. little yeah. 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 There's a little <laughs> bit of nerves. There's a little bit of you know could just go downhill. But mm-hmm. you know, it's the elephant in the room, and we're yeah. all sitting here going, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like there's a show coming out. We all know it's coming. We all yeah. hope it's going to be good. Yeah. I will say I've not seen one bit of news that makes me feel that yet. Everything I've seen is yes. positive. Yeah. The people, yeah. the fact that it seems we have fans running it makes me much more optimistic than I would be otherwise. Like Rafe seems to be a tremendous fan. I trust and, in Harriet. Harriet Pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Sanderson and she picked Rafe. Now. Yeah. And that's that alone and that one fact. I'm good. That's, yeah. that's a good point. When I first heard the news about Sanderson finishing the series, I was like, oh, God, like, if it's, it's going to be bad, but I have to know what the ending is, so I'm going to read it anyway. <laughs> but it, it was, I was really blown away that it, was, yeah. it wasn't bad. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 good, even, I should say. I feel like I'm having a very similar emotion now to the TV show as when I had, when it was announced that the series was getting finished yeah, by another good. author. We were all on the edge of our seat, worried, I don't mess it up. Let's no, no one. No, <laughs> there was a few people who were saying. Well, I mean, a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had what one book published at that point? Two, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was brand new. Yeah. Yeah. Elantris, Elantris was out, right? At that point, I think it was Elantris and Miss Portnoy were the only ones. Miss Portnoy. I would be. 
I'd be a lot more nervous, and no offense to Netflix, if it was over in their hands, because they seem to be adapting. I think it's like 40-some shows now. Yeah. And, yeah. That, you know, that's the throw it at the wall, see it sticks mentality. Yeah. Amazon, on the other hand, seems to be much more focused, precision. Mm. Yes. That's what I want to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can already kind of tell with Netflix, they have certain adaptations they're caring way more about. Witcher is the big ride right now. Yeah. So, I, again, this is the outsider perspective. I have no education in this. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen and what I'm speculating. Yeah. And yeah. The, the same. I'm preface that. But the, uh, the, the, the thing that I was really, that, I, that really got me off was the, the, when Amazon put the poll out, like, what was it, in the beginning of March? Yes. And it was, what, uh, what fantasy series are you most excited that we're producing? Yeah. You all yeah. showed up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is what we're talking about. This is the fans. Like, they all rallied. They're like, right, everybody, just, you know what to do. And, like, we're all, like, retweeting. <laughs> Honestly, a you? bunch <laughs> yeah. a bunch of freaking lunatics. <laughs> so, y'all are a force to be reckoned with. And I was like, yeah, sure. worry. Sure. I feel like I have a loaded gun. And if I point it to because they will destroy whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. I I think from the beginning I have not been worried about what's going to happen with the TV series because the people like everybody else said the people they have involved with it seem like fans of the series and really committed to preserving the integrity of it. I mean, obviously, you're making a change from uh, a 14 book series to you know a television series. Obviously, things are going to change. Things are going to be in a different order. I feel confident in the people working on this that they're going to do it justice. I think the thing that I'm actually most apprehensive about is going back to what everybody else said about how amazing this community is. It's small. It's close knit. Everybody like we have no assholes here. (laughs) And, you know, my. It's amazing. (laughs) I know. And like no trolls on the Internet. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, okay. Okay. Here, here, here's an example. Here's an example. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I want to. Where are you? I want to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about. Um, Jen and I teamed up with another podcast called Everybody Hates Rand. It's another podcast hosted by women. That's a great episode, by the way. And we did. Oh, it was so much fun to do. Well, I mean, fun. Uh, <laughs> it was a roundtable discussion on uh, gender and feminism in the Wheel of Time. And, you know, we had some opinions that probably a lot of people didn't agree with or maybe sort of turned their perceptions on, on its head. And I, when we put that episode out, I was 100% loaded for bear. I was ready to go to war because I was like, I am going to have white men from all over the place coming at me telling me that I am wrong. Yeah, we put ourselves out there. The cishets are coming for us. You're wrong. And, <laughs> and you want to know what? We did not receive a single negative comment. Not one. No tweets, no DMs, no emails, no nothing. We had like two people before it came out when we announced that we were doing it and like put out a call for questions, like who are dicks about it. But that was it. And I'm like, I don't understand what's happening right now. What is this? And so my, you know, my husband has not read the series. He is here with me. There he is. (laughs) Don't be like that. You're totally, you're you're screwing up my point. He was, he was apprehensive about coming here because he had never read the series and he was worried that he was going to feel out of place. But be, there's there's not really any gatekeeping in this community. Yeah. And so he had felt welcome from the very beginning. And he's learning about things. And now he really wants to read this like more than he did before. He wants to read the series. Like, do it. Welcome One of to us. Panel. One of us. For you guys. So. <laughs> and my getting back to my main point is my apprehension about the series is that the fandom is going to start to really, really grow. And I'm worried that we're going to lose this, like beautiful, accepting, inclusive community. So, I think... We need to work at it, but I also think we are like the crystal seed in that solution. Mm -hmm. We're being immersed in like the whole fandom Mm -hmm. and we have to keep and start the nicety and spread that to everybody else who joins us. It's up to us to, to set the example and if people are being jerks, like call them out on it and be like, no, we don't do this here. Yeah, I mean, and that, I, I always, that, that, that's one of the main things I always said was, especially about the real time, is like, 
the re- I, I always felt the reason we didn't have those types of people was because they don't want to read this book because it's a female centric book and mm-hmm. it's a matriarchal society That's for the most part. Like, like they don't want to read it and they or they start reading it and they put it down so they're not here because they haven't they don't mm-hmm. want to partake. I, I love that article that was put out. There was like an, and there was an analysis of like statistics in the wheel of time, and I made a video going through it, and it was amazing to see. I had no idea it was more female perspective than male. Mm-hmm. Um, more female characters are given the point of view for longer periods of time, um, unless it's you know the very, I think it's the very end and the very beginning are more male than the entire big chunk in the middle. Mm-hmm. You're following the more powerful characters who have more political sway, mm-hmm. which are women for the most part. And it never bothered me, it never occurred to me, and then someone pointed out, and I was like. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things I like to talk about a lot is empathy. And I think that when you spend 10,000 pages in someone else's head, and half of those are of a different gender, um, you have more empathy than people who don't read. And I think that that allows us to look in each other, step in each other's shoes. Every time we meet somebody, we are like the most empathetic group of people I've ever met. And I think that's what makes it such a cool um, are, can we? We've been saying thank you to everybody. <laughs> I, I was uh, sorry. I didn't no, have to. Ahead, let me interrupt you. Yes. Um, <laughs> I've been going to Dragon Con for ten years. It's a huge convention. It's freaking massive. I have seen more hugging here in like the 48 hours that we've been here than I have seen in the entirety of the 10 years that I've been going to Dragon Con. This is such a huggy group of people and I'm freaking living for it. I love it. It's amazing. Were y'all at karaoke last night? Did you see that girl singing? (laughs) That was the best thing ever. Like, okay, so there's this girl. Just just one example and then I'll be quiet. Um, We're here to talk, baby. No, no, no. no. Um, Okay, so this girl like had her friends come up. I mean, afterwards she hit the flask it was awesome she fixed me like that's my girl um anyway so her friends came up and stood behind her and she was so nervous i don't know if she's ever done karaoke before i didn't get her name i felt so bad that i I really i didn't know where she she kind of disappeared no i did say a good job afterwards but she was so nervous guys that she couldn't look at the audience she held her face like away from everybody and she put herself up to the mic like this but she what came out of her was like the most beautiful powerful voice she and she it. she was shaking visibly shaking next to the mic like this but she sang she didn't stutter she she did a great job she was on the beat she performed well and like she, her whole face was red and like her friends had to help her off the stage when she was done she got a standing O. like we were all out of our seat like clapping and it was in a really emotional moment like it's not even the fact that the room supported her afterwards and were clapping. It's the fact that she, even though she was so effing scared, she went up there anyway because she trusted the room. That's what's even more important than the standing up afterwards. She's like, because I don't think I could have gone to any other, like Jess said, any other convention where she could trust the room enough, even being that scared, to go up there. So she had to put faith in, in the people watching her first to get up there and say, I'm going to do this, and her friend, even with her friends helping her. So that's really awesome, and that's on, on y'all, that she trusts the people that just read these books along with her. And what other community can you do that? You have people that enjoy video games with you, or might like the same movies as you, and everybody likes Star Wars, and everybody's like this, and everybody's like that. But these freaking books uh, <laughs> are bringing a girl to sing up on stage. For, she might never do that again in her whole life. She might never have that strength again. And, and that was her moment last night. That was because of books. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that was amazing. So yeah, that was, that was you guys. So, yeah, it was a nice moment. Yeah. <laughs> really nice moment. I've seen a bunch of nice moments here, and I, I don't want to bring up one in particular, but I think it's a great example, so I'm not gonna spoil this. Spoil it. But anyway. Um, it's in the name. <laughs> I just want to say there's a, a place here where people find each other. And I think that's amazing. That's all yeah. I'm saying about that. Yeah. I, 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 Jordan Khan has always been that for, for me, for especially for even going to other conventions. This convention, and I, I, I say it all the time, but I, I guess I'm a little biased, but um, I hear it from, 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 from guests 
all the time because I do guest services, but I hear it from you guys all the time. This is my favorite convention. I look forward to coming here all year. The people here are amazing. I've never not had a problem at a convention before with attendees walking around talking like, it, and that's you guys. You guys are all, like we've. I've I've never heard a problem from any of of my people about you guys. So thanks. <laughs> but again, we're yeah. we're from the internet. And there's no. There's no that's surprising. Yeah, I know. It's, I know. <laughs> it's like some weird alternate reality <laughs> where people just aren't assholes. And I, I don't understand it, but I really like it. <laughs> A good portion of my comment section is not here. <laughs> Daniel comes from a different beast. Uh, yeah. He comes from the YouTube. <laughs> there's there's real time wholesomeness, and then there's YouTube. <laughs> it's a dumpster fire. Well, and I mean, I suppose it isn't all sort of rainbows and sunshine all the time because when we initially started, um, we got. A number of emails from surprise white men who were criticizing our cussing because we cuss a lot. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, they don't approve of that. It's not ladylike or something. I don't know. Uh, can I swear in here? They can fuck off. Um, <laughs> and also criticizing our woke feminism. And we're like, what? Woke? <laughs> okay. Well, a couple things. And so, like. It was kind of, it was weighing on us a lot, and uh, we ended up going on, like, a completely unplanned 45-minute rant in the middle of one of our episodes. We stopped getting emails after that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess they got the point. <laughs> how, do, how do you guys deal with it? I mean, I'm sure you, I'm sure each of you have at least gotten some negativeness like that. So, how do you, how do you deal with that? I, I'm completely numb to it at this point. I mean, I've gotten everything from... I think last night someone commented on my Tom character examination. He said, Jesus, you have a punchable face. And I was like, oh, well, all right. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's wrong uh, Come on over and punch it. Let's do this. <laughs> I mean, I, you got to just ignore it and roll it off your shoulders. But at the same time, I love how often I'll see someone from my community responding and be like, you even read the books? What's happening right now? And the person's always like, no. Nah. <laughs> I, I take the opposite approach. I internalize it. <laughs> Push it down. And I just let it and let it drive me for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean and that's something that's really awesome in this community though, that I think most of the time when I'm seeing debates about the series in the comments section, let's say I, I, let's say I do a uh, you know another series review, I'll use a specific example, but I use another series. If people start debating in the comments, the tone gets nasty. But at wheel of time, it's just this really nice, like dissenting opinions are not discouraged. And I've heard some, no offense, really dumb opinions. <laughs> but they're still like, you know, validated and people are like, okay, that's fine. Here's why you're wrong. But <laughs> which episode of ours are you listening to? <laughs> All of it, no. <laughs> Every single one. My, my thing is that there's not, if no one's dissenting or creating some sort of, you know, back and forth, then that's stagnation. Then that, then you're not, you're not reaching anybody, good or bad. The basic good. So that's what you need because if you get like if it's flatlining from everything that you're putting out there, that's really bad. So if someone has a good opinion or a bad opinion, whatever, at least it keeps you know the the train moving essentially. So we need that. And yeah. with the depth, sorry, with the depth of these books, debate should always be encouraged because there is all kinds of deeper thought. There's pulling from all these cultures that are so incredible and worth discussion. I mean, I know more about Eastern cultures because of Wheel of Time than I would have ever without what Robert Jordan pulled from. And of course, it got me curious looking into them more and more. Um, and that the discussion should always be encouraged. So if you do see a dissenting opinion, Try to figure out where the person got that idea from, because there's so much depth to real time. There might be legitimate evidence, regardless of what the opinion is, because there's just little nuggets everywhere mm-hmm. to pull from and examine um, monstrously deeply. Um, it's shocking how much a reread of the series will deliver that the first read through uh, can't. Especially if you're 12 and reading it for the fourth time. I think that's a good moment. We kind of wanted to open this up. Um, so if anybody wants to like uh, express your dissenting opinion of, 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 of one of our theories or anything, really. In the middle of So is there any worry that you guys have that with the TV show coming out, and the discussion based around these books being amazing discussion, that 
it's already out there. What's there still to discuss? No. Or no. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> there is so much and the TV show is going to add a whole nother layer and we're going to discuss what's the TV show, how does it relate to the books or what are they going to do, oh they changed this thing that means this thing's going to change and we're going to go down that path and talk about it for hours and hours and hours. More content will always equal more discussion. Mm. If, if we were worried about that we probably wouldn't have started a podcast because we're just <laughs> so no that's part of the community and, and we've, I've already learned I've already learned more stuff from like talking to each of you and the fans, like I said earlier, than I ever thought I would. But I've got a lot more room to grow. So don't ever think you know everything about the Wheel of Time. I hope that nobody thinks that. Jesus. But uh, I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> the more, the more, like it's open sponge, the more you can, can absorb from other people. I just think it's going to enrich your takeaway of the books. Well, I think the thing that's going to be really interesting about the TV show, too, is, you know, like I like I said before, you're taking a 14-book series and trying to turn it into a television series. So just, if nothing else, there's going to be a lot of discussion to be had about sort of the way that they interpret it and the way that they sort of arrange everything in the story, how they're switching POVs. You know, they're not going to do it exactly the way it is in the book. You know, maybe we'll get fewer parent chapters. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> you know, like, Ooh. let's keep him... Uh, no more wolf dream training montages. Mm-mm. No, I'm good. Um, <laughs> Speaking of that, we are doing a to-cut or not-to-cut panel later in the day. I propose that we cut oh, the training montages in the wolf dream. <laughs> That's my 11, proposal. At 11.30, so right after this. Um, so I, I, going off of that, I also love the idea that there will be two separate discussions. There will be comparison discussions. All these things will be going down. Where there's, there's all these new things to talk about. But what you often find online for TV shows that have been adapted is there's two communities. There is the community that's loyal to the TV show, and there's a the community that's loyal to the books. And there's overlap, of course, which mm-hmm. is great. But I don't think it'll ever crush the books. No matter what, nothing can stop the books from being the books. <laughs> They're always going to be there and be the incredible, beautiful, amazing things that they are. Um, but I think the TV show will do nothing but add to the conversation, which yeah. is great. Mm-hmm. Can, I, can I chime in real quick? Yeah. I, I, I just want to say something on that. Is that going back to the community as well, too. So <clears throat> I do the I, I help moderate on the on our on the Jordicon Facebook page too. So there were there was a, people talking about that specific thing that how there's going to be all oh, these new people coming into the to the series that are only going to be television show people, and there was like two people that were like, oh yeah, I don't want any of these. You know, they're going to be running. Who are they to be? You know, right. and they and they already they they're they're, they're not yeah. it's not even a thing yet. But <laughs> it was we didn't even have to say anything like hey don't already be internet bullying people that don't exist but <laughs> the whole everyone on the page was like no we're not having that here that's not going to happen they're going to be great they're gonna, we're going to grow like I didn't no one needed to say anything everyone on the page just was like no that's not going to happen no thanks I, I, something I can't stress enough is be open to change because every time you adapt something to another medium you have to change things for pacing for all kinds of stuff I mean there's certain things that take a page in real time that would take an episode and vice versa so there's you're going to have to have that, and I've always encouraged people to keep an open mind, you know, let things be changed, because with you change medium, it's a, like Lord of the Rings cut multiple characters and things like that. I am of the opinion Tom Bombadil would not work on screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> but he's weird. Yeah. 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 He's really beautiful. Cool. Shut your damn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We'd, uh... Um, so, uh, lots some other people are actually uh, live streaming right now, so we have questions from our Discord. Um, oh, cool. So, uh, Tom the Dragon Just Born would like to know what um, small character scene you all are most looking forward to seeing adapted or talking about on your podcast um, in the show. Oh my gosh. Uh, if anyone here really sensitive about spoilers? Do we need to be worried about that? <laughs> <laughs> all right, good. Um, this guy over here is like. Don't take on his red book. Nah, I'm fine. So <laughs> you go right ahead. It's your, it's your Discord right now. Yeah, on. I have to think. All right, let's let's put some balls of light in over his eyes and hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a really hard question. Um, what I, what I would like most like to see produced. Um, honestly, I. I some of the things I'm really excited about. Well, okay, the, the question was small character scene. I'm gonna try to. Um, I, I have one. That, okay, I mean, if you got mine ready, yeah. Uh, All right, okay. Oh, Intar. <laughs> scene. Oh, oh, yeah, that would be yeah. a really good one. Yeah. Um, and I mean, in like chapter four or something, what Moraine's uh, Manetherin speech? Oh yeah. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let me go with the minor character. Sure. Well, I was going to say, like, minor character. Like, 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 uh, <laughs> literally, that, that's probably what was going to be my response. Especially in the beginning, obviously, of the season. That that um, That's one of the things that got me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to sit back and let Daniel. He has his answer, so. Uh, well, that was my first. Did all three of us think of that right away? Because, goddamn. Is this a minor character? Um, that, that was I, I don't know if it was a small character, character or a small scene. Yeah. Um, if it's small scene, yes. Well, yes. <laughs> Have fun with it. Uh, for me, this is later on in the series, but Rain's unification with Tam, if that's yes. done right, oh, that yeah. will tell me everything's been done right. Yeah. There's so much character weight on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so for me, that is really going to be the green or red flag for up to that point. Oh my god, I know exactly what the answer is. I'm sorry. When, uh, when Varen makes her announcement when she drinks her tea. That's my answer. My, like, my brain stopped working when I, I read that. That was, oh my god. The whole room, like, didn't take a breath. I swear to god, the air pressure dropped. You guys see how I did that? I did not do a spoiler. I just you said, did such a good job. When Varen drinks her tea, and we all know That's what I'm talking about, about without spoiling yeah. anything. <laughs> And uh, just one more really, really fun one that's earlier on. Uh, a certain scene involving uh, Matt, Galad, and... Yeah! 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 For sure. Well, it's neither a small character. It's not a small scene, but the crystal columns. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. that's one of my favorite moments. In the, yeah. The, the, mm-hmm. yeah. And, oh, oh, uh, with the flicker, flicker, fl- flicker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that's a flicker. So now we're just naming a bunch of scenes. <laughs> Well, it's neither, a, it's yeah. neither a small scene nor a small character, but when Egwene lays waste to this, this Shanchen, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> it's not, it, it is a minor character. Don't cut an arc. Keep Narkin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Nark smart. Nark smart. We are trying to is Nark here? Nark is. I, 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 I don't think they're, they want to. <laughs> Was there a fist pump somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, with your guys' content, do you plan on keeping the books as canon when you do your discussions when the series comes out, or do you want to merge them together or do comparisons? I mean, how do you guys plan on merging the two media there? Handle the show yes. as our Jess and I have, have lightly touched on this. We have found a medium that works with us because we don't do spoilers, and we go chapter by chapter, and then we have a fun little discussion. I don't know if we're going to have to do more work, have like a separate thing, or like like when the when the episodes come out, like maybe that night or the next day, we'll have a special thing on that because we've already done a couple of bonus episodes. I mean, we've done you know stuff where we've had spoilers out things with these mm. guys. So maybe in the spirit of that, because we're definitely not going to change what works for us because there's a show coming out that's only going to expound upon something we've already been doing. So we'll touch that and then like, okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. We're going to be doing this today. So yeah, we'll touch on it, but then we're going to keep pushing forward and do what we do, baby. It's yeah. a lot on what Amazon does. Are they yeah. going to drop it week by week? Are they going to drop it whole season? Are we going to get 15 um, episodes at once? How do we deal with that? Are we going to be... Is it going to be good? That's like <laughs> honestly like a good part of whether or not we're going to be talking about it. I choose to believe that it's going to be good because I just I can't. Right, right. I can't. I, mean, I just can't. It's supposed to drop all the I, that's what I heard. So I, I just found that out. I mean, yeah. maybe we'll just do like a four-hour just bonanza where we talk about an entire no, scene. We are not. And... <laughs> I love you. I love you so much. Uh, we've, we've talked about a lot of different things, but everything from like watching it and just like live streaming on Twitter and like live commentary, or we could uh, like a break. That's a Freaking great idea. So Can we gank that? No. Actually, we could all do it together. That'd be that one. Calm down. <laughs> uh, for me, it's still green, green hat, and then the oh, Yeah, let's keep no, the um, Sorry, I was just for me, it depends on the video. I mean, I'm going to probably do character comparisons for what they're doing. The books for TV shows are going to be just, it's entirely dependent. So the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my question was, is there any particular, like, because you see with how Game of Thrones came out, how suddenly you have this, like, groundswell of merchandise and stuff that's like, <laughs> professionally made, 
like when you walk into Hot Topic, you walk into Walmart, you walk in all these places, and it's this big deal. Is there any particular merchandise you guys are excited might come from the show being successful? Lots of medallion. <laughs> I just I a real. I love tavern teas. I don't like the fox and medallion. Um, I want. Fair enough. Yeah, and so that's that's something I've always wanted, and yeah, I'm excited when it comes out. Now, I I, I will say one of the things we did is we rallied behind the artists because they've been producing great content for such a long time. Mm. Um, I really do hope that the show makes an effort to incorporate them back into and like. They've done so much for us. They I mean, if, if you look at our Instagram feed, it is full of art that we have um, literally borrowed from those artists. Um, and we give them credit, of course, and we want them to come back and we, and we want to support them. But uh, I think we're all kind of sad when we found out. But at the same time, we understand that there's going to be professionally produced merchandise. Yeah. And like, it's hard to reconcile those two. Like, and Sam, well, the thing is, is like there's in Walmart. Yeah. there's already <laughs> professionally professionally made merchandise by these artists. Like they're yeah. amazing. So I am really hoping that. I mean, obviously, Harriet's been working at least with Tavir and Tees for a really long time, and I'm really hoping that she'll have enough pull to be able to get them to bring those artists just back those on board. A job. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I mean, I understand why the license has to change, mm-hmm. but, and, yeah. you know, there's there's probably a, a sort of, okay, we have to terminate the one contract and then maybe start a different contract. Yeah, I just, yeah. Yeah, that's, like, that's legal. What for, that's yeah. what yeah. Yeah. And that, they pay attention though, like yeah. like 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 it's a, it's a different era in 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 the in the industry. Like they pay attention to the fandom and what they want, and the fandom cares about things like this. Mm-hmm. Yes. Whereas like thirty years ago, for no one gave a crap about like no one even knew about stuff like this. Like mm-hmm. where, where, like no one cared. Oh, how is the how does the producer treat this extra? You know, we hear about those things, and and the fandom cares. Mm-hmm. So. I, like, they and I mean, bitches love like swag. <laughs> Give me that swag, baby. Yeah. I, I like what you said there. You, the, the fandom has a direct dialogue with these people, and we've already seen that with the poll mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they hear that. There's articles written about that. I've talked about that on a, cu- a couple things I've made. Like, yeah. That's spread. That's heard. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Did the Amazon account say we heard you or something like that? Or really, like... Yeah, they yeah. said we heard you, yeah. and that's 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 big. That oh, seems that's, that's a literally point. a fan base showing up for a show that they might have been. You know, okay, where's the response here? And we beat out Lord of the Rings. We beat out two shows that have already been out with a trailer mm-hmm. and one that's established. That's big by like twenty percent. By like yeah. a yeah. wide yeah. 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 Because we're all a bunch of lunatics. We're all so much more connected now that you know if if Amazon wants to use their Twitter account ever again. <laughs> they need to, the <laughs> it's not just that poll. Every time I see Amazon Prime or Studios tweet, there's people in the comments like, "Where's the news?" <laughs> Unrelated posts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you excited? For this isn't about Watts. Where is Wheel of Time? <laughs> no, we're excited about Wheel of Time. Amazon. Fair. Um, so off the show, when we went from uh, Jordan to Sanderson, uh, a lot of things that Jordan set up, plot lines that Jordan set up, got cut. Yeah. Which ones were you most bummed about? <laughs> I'm honestly not sure I know enough of what Sanderson cut and or what he's only talked about it a little bit. Yeah, they talk about it in the notes sometimes. Yeah, we do like they do it. We do a Jordan uh, to Roberts notes panel, so sometimes in that panel they talk about stuff like that. Well, we're at a disadvantage. It's all of our first Jordan. <laughs> yeah, no, right. uh, I yeah, mean, it's true. They he. They did say that there was a, a bit about my personally my the one that I missed the most was there was a bit about Arthur Hawkwing meeting up with Tuan and I really oh, wish I saw that, I that on, oh. on screen because Matt said that would have been bomb. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about plot lines that were like ended when Sanderson took over, but the reason that Jen and I are currently doing what we're doing is because I basically, I first started reading the series like back in like 2006 or 2007, and I made it like halfway through Winter's Heart, and I'm like, I died. And then I resurrected myself and moved on with my life. And then um, at the beginning of 2018, I decided that I was going to read the whole thing front to back. I was going to finish it. And I, I like... 
I crushed it in like three and a half months or something like that. And like I have ADD, I hyper focus like oh, both. Of them. So um, so I got to the end of the very last book, and I just sort of sat there and I was like. And I went to Twitter and I screamed into the void that I needed a processing partner. <laughs> and this bitch shows up. And we, <laughs> we like screamed at each other for three days, just <laughs> tweeting in all caps, like, what the fuck? <laughs> and, um, and so then all of this happened. But there were, I don't know about plot lines that were cut. There are plot lines that were never tied up. There are so many things that I wanted to know about things that I wanted to see that happened. I wanted to see what happened when Elaine took the throne. Is she going to take the throne? Like, Morghese isn't dead. So, like, what's happening with that whole thing? What happens with the babies? Okay, so Rand did this whole thing. So what happens there? Um, Okay, what about the Aiel? What happens to the Aiel? Their whole life is... But, okay, <laughs> what happens? Uh, you know, it, like 14 books of just like building up all of these plot lines and then just. <laughs> not even a friggin' like real epilogue or anything. And I was just like, I'm going to die. I need to know. <laughs> Can somebody please fanfic this shit? I need something. So. I think Grey Hat then. Hey, so, opinion on uh, Peyton Fane, guys. Like, I mean, do you think he's going to be capped? Like, I, did you really like him? Like, his whole storyline? In book 14, they just cut him right off. It was just so weird and anticlimactic. I mean, I, and I think Sanderson stated he yeah. didn't handle that quite the way he yeah. felt he should. And I think that's something that can definitely be corrected in the show. Because yeah. yeah. I think Fane is... He's oh, fantastic. He's a yeah. Oh, he's such a good villain. He's so gross. <laughs> oh, he's disgusting. I love I know him. Daniel talk about this. Yeah, so I've been a big advocate that the Wheel of Time has horror elements to it, and Pot on Fame is a major proponent yeah. of that, and they need to keep that in the show because it's it sets Wheel of Time apart. I mean, the opening of the Wheel of Time is terrifying, the road and the merger all and these mm-hmm. things. If you The tone of that should be, oh, my God. Um, and it should be horrifying. So I think Fane should be one of the things that's not cut. It should be increased. I want more effort on Fane. Yeah. I want more. Uh, what is this disgusting, horrid, evil manifestation of humanity rather than the shadow? Because he's yeah. this. He's this evil that's based on like, us, yeah. not the shadow. Y'all that's know what I. He's evil. No, you're fine. <laughs> y'all, y'all know what I think about when I think about Pat on Fane. You know that when Jafar is from Aladdin and he yeah. turns into that thing that he has to rescue Aladdin and he's like hobbling around with that hump in that crutch. Yeah. That's totally. <laughs> <laughs> and like you know, when he like takes off the beard and the Jafar's on ball. But yeah, no, that's definitely him with gold tooth and like everything. <laughs> Which, and they, he turns his smoke. Crap! Like it definitely yeah. works. Yeah. 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 Oh, would be an evil genius. Yeah. Let me take another one. Daniel, uh, Jeff, you yeah. were next. So, if this is like massively successful, which you know I feel it might be, you know they're going to want to do like spinoffs and stuff that's like off canon. Like, what do you think of that? Like, how do you think of stuff, like, being added to, like, the TV canon, if you will? I'm really super excited about it. Let me tell you something. I want to know what the hell Tam Althor was up to back in the day. Tam, boy, what you doing? Oh, scenes that aren't in the book. Like when Tam and Abel go to the White Tower. Yeah! "Yeah." Oh, yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Well, the boys... (laughs) Frankly, a young Tam Althor would be a great Uh Uh spinoff. That that was one of the original planned outriggers... Uh, yeah. Before before Jordan uh, passed, they, they spoiler alert. Yeah. So Jordan Con won Tom Doherty game, and uh, he dropped a spoiler pretty hard on us <laughs> by, by accident, which was hilarious. <clears throat> During opening ceremonies, they did like a little Q and A after the. There was a, a skit. It was much l- <laughs> less than what we did yesterday. That but, was buck wild. Yeah, but uh, uh, there was. They were doing a little bit of a Q&A, and they said, oh, so what else was planned? And Tom was like, well, there's the there's the uh, Matt and Tuan outrigger after the last battle. And everyone was like, Ugh! And, 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 and Brandon, Harriet, Maria, Allen was like, Ugh! You saw that? 
and also they survive and they're together still. I would love to see more of Matt and Tuan. Like the moment, the very moment that they saw each other, I shipped that shit so hard. Oh my god, I shipped it. And I would, that was another plot line that I was absolutely furious that it never got tied up because I'm like, okay, does she. I think she might kill him. She likes him. She might, she might fucking kill him. I would blame her because he's a little shyster. But like, I would love to see some extra content, just sort of it, more Matt and Tuan in general, just in the course of the story, like after the fact, how all that stuff goes down. Like, because uh, you know how you know how like female praying mantises bite the head off their face after. <laughs> That's fucking Tuan, and I'm like, girl, yeah. Yes, like yeah, it's, I would I love that. He addresses the Soul Bomb issue. Oh yeah, that is a yeah. great idea. Like, what happens yeah. to the Empire How's that resolved? now that we know the Soul Bomb yeah. can channel? Do we just and, and two on can, can channel? And two on can channel. I that you guys keep telling things that I'm like, yes, that was another thing I was really mad about. Okay. Also, I'm, maybe I'm the one here. I want to go back. I'd love to see Arthur Hawkwing and how that transitioned into the Sean Chan Empire after they're sent off. Um, I want to see Moradin's involvement with what happened there because we all know he, for some reason, is like, I'm in prison. I'm in prison. <laughs> 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 so I'd love to see. That might be the best thing's ever come out of my mouth. That's the <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> him from now on for me. Okay. <laughs> that's canon, guys. <laughs> all the way in the back there. I, I want to make one comment about the Mordeth part, which I think is hopefully something they pick up on. See, it's my, thought, it's my feeling that Pat and Chain was just infected by this virus that took him to Shallow Gulf. And so now that the Dark One's gone in age four, this evil that is that's infected it will actually embed itself there and will become kind of the main villain of what you know the, the next age is. So to me, that actually, I think Sanderson ends up that perfect. Pat and Chain dies with the evil that's infecting him, I think is actually still there. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Oh the ground and everything around Shallow Hill. So I, I like how it became this kind of weird, like little thread that just kind of goes through the entire se- series. And if you want to like look at it that way, you can say that the Wheel of Time was actually a story about how like, this evil infected this, you know, uh, this 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 person that was connected to the Dark One all to make its way to Shallow Hill and let itself and become the next villain of the. Thing. Can I theorize a little bit here? I love that. Yeah. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. You guys are proving our point. Yeah. <laughs> who, would have, who, would have, who would have thought Theoryland would have a theory about it? <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> so I definitely like that. But what I, I think happened, or what I, my theory has been that um, when Rand was about to kill the Dark One, the pattern needed to have a potential replacement ready. And so, the second Rand chooses not to kill the Dark One and seal him away, the pattern doesn't need the replacement anymore, Matt kills Pat and Fang. But the, the entire thing leading up to that was setting up a potential replacement, because the pattern can't have the Dark One de- be dead, right? Yeah. The pattern is true neutral, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, just like everything else, it, was, it had all its pieces in place, and one of those pieces was if Rand makes the wrong decision and kills the Dark One, it's all found in vain in this place, you know? So, but uh, yeah. A lot but I mean, that's, of, that's, that's, like that's essentially a, a sort of extension of the theory he put forth. Yeah, you absolutely. know. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's the replacement <laughs> evil type thing. Yeah. So that's I, I like the way that works. Yeah, yeah for sure. Except the dark one the next day to be like Rosa. That can be. Oh, okay. so, okay. so, so, so after after the, after the series is over, that could be like the new like what, what is it with Game of Thrones the mm-hmm. blood and the blood and fire Targaryen one that they're doing? Yeah. So that, that that would be oh the ne- uh, and the advent and the adventures of Patton thing. The <laughs> Grossest man alive. Uh, <laughs> don't interruption of air at all. In the Shadow Logan would be a really good spinoff. Ooh, watching it. Yeah. I mean, there's so much. There's so I just much. want everything. Yeah. Just want uh, all of it. Okay. Yeah. With the backlog of history that there is in Wheel of Time, I defend it as the most depth in any fantasy history I've seen. Um, you could do the foundation of the White Tower, you could do the Aiel, you could do so many things. And as long as someone like Harriet or Brandon is consulting when they do that, go for it. As long as this show's a success, have fun. Build it, do it justice, let's see it. I want to see Arthur Hawkwing fight the White Tower. Who doesn't want to see that? <laughs> the Siege of Tarvalon? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. And, and the, with, with more death whispering in the middle. With more death? Yes. 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 <laughs> with more death is your, oh, I'm through it, guys. <laughs> I think you 
first, and then... Yes. If y'all don't mind a giant speculative question again. We love them. Um, <laughs> Jess, you mentioned um, after you finished reading, you wanted somebody to fanfic it. And that's what I use role play sites for. So I have a role play site that is kind of a portal stone world. Oh, okay. And the taint on Sidene has been clenched for 300 years before the Dragon Reborn shows up. And a lot of what I focused on in like setting up the scene is what happens to the Aeol after Sidene has been cleansed. Mm-hmm. But there's a whole lot of other stuff too. Um, and I was just wondering like what y'all's take on that would be like for having Sidene being cleansed for so long. Like how would societies change? Like what, what would be like the first thing that comes to your mind? How would it change? I mean, the, we'd need Black Tower a lot sooner, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Black Tower's been there for a long time. What about the Red Aja? Yeah. They, <laughs> that was my first thing. Yeah, let's do it. They get real tight with Ashaman, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, Where are all the male channelers from the Aeol go? Because they went the East Coast. Male-wise yeah. ones. Yeah. Male-wise ones. Male-wise yeah. ones. I, I they, actually, oh, my bad. Can, can you have a male-wise one? Uh, I would say, <laughs> that's why we've had 300 years for this. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, it's more the wisdom that I'm questioning. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you said it. You said it, that's funny. <laughs> that, that, that leads into a, a theory that I've always had where the, the clan, so like the, you know how they, the clan chiefs, not everyone can be a clan chief when they go into what they Yeah, there are female clan chiefs. And, well, the, uh, the, um, and the, the men who go, the, the men that they send away are the ones who are born with the spark in them. So I, uh, one of the things was there's, oh, there's the men who can learn, yeah. too. But they're not, they're never going to, they'll never do it unless they're taught. Yeah. That was always who I thought the clan chiefs were. Like, like maybe a vein within the clan chiefs were oh, those oh are the God. ones that that's who they what's like. The, that's who ended up. That's interesting. Do we remember? No. How, how many make it out? Uh, it's high. Like no, the a third. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not I, really excited. That was always one of my. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put that. One of my. I feel it's more about acceptance of the history and the ability to like. Strength, flexible. strength of character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. accountability. It, yeah. 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 One of my biggest speculations to the future is just how long the stigma around Ashaman will be there. I mean, we see at the end, there's a couple of moments of people like, thank you, you know, all these people. I mean, there's so many spoilers flying around here. I still don't want, like, I have an instinct in me that's like, don't. Um, but, you know, there's, so for me, I think, you know, look at society. We still struggle with dumb ideas sticking around for thousands of years. So, I mean, there's probably going to be a stigma with the Black Tower. And is there a way to fix that to merge the White Tower to stay different? What are you guys going to do? It's going to be awkward at times no matter what. Um, you know, you can't technically just knock on and be like, how many of our guys did you kill over the years? Like, there's, there's things like that. So I, I, that's one of my biggest speculations is what the relationship will be there in the future because, holy crap, it's awkward. <laughs> Sitting down at the table there is going to be difficult. Well, and, you know, when when you think about it, obviously women can't tell when men are channeling, so they have to take their word for it that the taint has been cleansed. They have to take these guys' word for it that they're not going to go mad, right? And well, there, there's no way to prove bad. it. So there's circles, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I suppose that's true. Um, there's but, a weave for that now. Yeah. That's 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 there's a weave for that now. <laughs> that's the Wheel of Time version if there's an app for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's also there's a Terra Realm for that as well. Well, yeah, all, obviously always a Terra There's a Terra Realm. Because, I mean, Contemplate we know has the, the Terra Realm for me. That's you right. Yeah. Have to scoot out of here. And, so, no, no, no. I'm no. Just, you, you got, there's four minutes left. That's what that's like. That's you do. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. You know, we can go over because right. there's there's a thirty minute break in between, but like that's okay. Yeah. Well, I don't want to hold start. you guys if you have to, like. I think I don't know if they have to reset the rules. Yeah. first, yeah. 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 Do you do you guys like just one more thing? Do you guys wonder if like maybe like the old tongue will become like Klingon and like real time? Like people will so. start like people learn it. it. People will start. I think yeah. they need to be more developed enough. enough. Yeah. 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 But do you think they'll fill in those blanks? I hope so. Yeah. There's a little small staff. Yeah. I think so. I'd like to hear. I want that so bad. <laughs> uh, Christine? Um, just tying back to what we had started with about how inclusive this community is, I think it's really reflective of the way that the main characters relate to each other in books. So there's always conflict, there are always these huge moral dilemmas, but when you look at the way that the main characters guide each other and teach each other and welcome each other, I think in the end that's really what allows Rand to make the choices that he makes. 
and what allows people who are in conflict to come together for the greater good. And relating to the TV show, I think um, it's very relevant. And a lot of people are going to tap into that and make it successful because it's, it's what people want to see and what we need to see. Exactly. I mean, this is a story of friendship. It's a story of testing your friendship through the most difficult things possible. And Robert Jordan took the time to, you know, very often in these books you're told, these people are friends, and that's it. No, you see these people interact, their dynamics. They all have unique ways of seeing each other. Um, they all have those weird little quirks in your friendship. Why is my friend so good with women? When you know, <laughs> None of them are good with women. No. <laughs> at all. I think that, to me, is the soul of Wheel of Time. It's the friendships at the core of it. And I think that's reflected with the ending in Rand, him on Dragon Mount, decisions made there. It's all about the relationships that we've come to a part of. I mean, that's and it's not even just that, I don't think. It's You have these minor characters that in real life, right, we see people who see minor in our lives and we make assumptions about them, but really they have so much more to offer. Yeah. Right? So I think Tam would be a good example of that, where initially he's just Rand's dad. He's this guy that nobody really knows a whole lot about. But look at how much he influenced Oh, yeah. There's tons of characters. Tell Honest, I think, like a lot like that. Like, he's a pretty minor character. We don't see a lot. But he's he's the reason Matt is so successful. He's the reason the band is so successful. Well, Matt can't organize things. <laughs> no shade, but Matt's an idiot. I love him very much, but he's just... Dagger Matt. Oh. Dagger Matt. Dagger Matt. Dagger Matt. One of the most brilliant political minds of the wheel time is Barrelane, who people write on all the time. Yes. 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 Genius when it comes to manipulation yes. and keeping her tiny little, you know, uh, country in uh. this, a nice, safe spot. It's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still would really like to see Fael cut her, though. <laughs> <laughs> cut her with a knife. <laughs> That's got. That's a real. That was a really fun scene to read in the books for those of y'all that have read it. When uh, Fael almost did that to Bear Lane, and Ruark just goes up, "No, no, we're going to take your knife." <laughs> no, give me the knife. No, I know you got it. Come on, this is your punishment. She's like, okay. Give me the two of them. Yeah, that was awesome. All of them. Now you're grounded. Him counting to three, and then Bear Lane like kind of running, scooting down the hall. He's like, "Oh, I count to three. It's just like, okay. <laughs> Hey guys, we are technically that is done. That we that was our hour, but we have a little bit of time to run over. Um, Wait, if you maybe like one last question, and then we can um, call it a, call it a day. We can pack up pretty fast. Yeah. This, yeah. Uh, just a speculative question. I was curious about what you guys think is the future of the white cloaks, especially in relation to the black tower and the white tower. So actually, tying back to one of the earlier questions of threads, I wish we would gotten a little more closure with. So on Fetter Three, I'm not gonna. Show spoilers on that because I know most people have yet to read that, but there is more conclusion there. And they are one of the groups that, you know, you, you love to hate them. Like, that's, you know, they're so well written as these, they're, you know, religious extremists almost. And the evolution is brilliant. And I fully believe Galad is the guy to do it because he's a moral absolutist, but he's actually a good guy. Like, he can relate to them, but he also can course correct. And Fucking so, lawful good. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm, I love that, and my speculation is that they can be a force for good. They're, they'll be the Boy Scouts down the road, and, you know? and, and they're going to be under Perrin, so it's, it's him under Perrin, and I think yeah. the combination is, you know, lawful good and, like, morally good, and the two of them are going to come to a great place with the White Clothes. They're, they're the police. Like, they're, they'll be, like, local police, and, and we need local police. I might not like them, but you kind of need them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I want to see is the integration of the gardeners and the old gear. I just want to. I just want to see a gardener. I want to. Yeah. I just want to see a gardener and a Randland old gear interact. Yeah. Like have a conversation. Like. <laughs> There's the two old gear, right? The. The Death Watch old gear. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that, that's what I want to see. I forgot about that. Death <laughs> <laughs> uh, Watch old gear never got the longing. They're not tied to the steading. They have yeah. a whole different. Yeah. Um, they can travel. It's like this. This almost a different species. Yeah. yeah. Um, different evolution. And, so. <laughs> I want a a torrid love affair between uh, the two. No, (laughs) (laughs) that's a perfect segue too. Because in the two cut or not to cut panel, one of the things I'm going to say we can absolutely cut is the entire race of the Ogier. 
Oh, how how, how Get the fuck out of here! Come and argue with me. Please come and argue with me. You know what? I don't care. No. No. I don't even I know <laughs> and the whole room just descends into fucking chaos. <laughs> I totally always fulfill the role of the villain. Please. please. <laughs> Do we want to? Tom told me we have a little bit of like a half yeah, an hour to run over. We don't want to mess up somebody wanna, else's thing. I mean, if you guys have to prepare we wanna, for your next stuff, or if you want to go yeah. to the concert yeah. and get food, you guys have a half hour in between panels. But yeah. it might be Mike is here. here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are free to, to go as long as until they come oh, in here to want to say if you're happy. If anybody wants to be in the future, we can hang for a little bit. Thank you. Thank you for coming. you to introduce yourself while you're chewing. I'm Kelsey, uh, name speaker, I guess, on the Discord for people who are listening. And I'm from Alberta, and I've been listening to Watt Spoilers for, oh gosh, a year and a half now, I guess. When That's when I found you guys. How'd you get into the series? Into the series itself? Um, yeah. Life as a kid was interesting, so I wanted to be elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I started picking up lots of dense fantasy books, and Wheel of Time was part of that. Um, I didn't really know anything about the Wheel of Time until I saw the first book in our little library in my hometown. And I'm like, oh, this is a sweet cover. What is this? And then I was grade 7, so maybe t- 12 at the time, th- 11 or 12. Um, so yeah, read the first book when I was 12 and then just kept going. <laughs> you want to do the same thing? Uh, my name is Charlyn, and my handle in the Discord is Metal Tatura. Um, let's see, what were the other things that you said about yourself? How did where, I'm come? F- where I'm from and how okay. we got into the series. I'm from a military family, so I'm not really from anywhere, but the United States, mostly California, Virginia, and Georgia. And I've also lived in the UK um, and, and New York. And let's see, I came to the series. <laughs> I started reading the series when I was 12. My dad gave me The Great Hunt. And so I actually read the second book first, and I actually couldn't get into it the first time I tried to read it, and so I like started reading it, put it away, revisited it months or a year later, so I think I was probably about 12 when I did read it, and I actually, like, I know this is going to be a hot take, I do recommend reading the second book first, <laughs> so Interesting. I think it's easier what? to get into the series. Hmm. There, uh, Robert Jordan does a really great job of sort of getting you up to speed with what happened, but in a um, not not you know plot um, plot fairy type of way. What's the word I'm looking for? Not um, exposition fairy ish type of way. And then you you get like right into the action, and then if you go back and read the first one, which is what I did. Then it just sort of fills in a few gaps for you. But um, anyway, so that's how I first started reading the series is book two, then book one, and then on. That's great. Did you guys, um, did you guys just come to Jordan Cotton because awesome Watt Spoilers guys are there? Yes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the only reason I'm here. Yeah, for real. I would not fly. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't fly across the country and buy my ticket six days before the event even started for just because. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I knew Jordan Con was a thing. But I knew, I knew it was a pretty small con. I didn't even realize it was in Atlanta. And I've lived in Atlanta for most of the last 10 years, like off and on. Um, and I only realized that it was like 30 minutes from my house watching the Discord conversations about people coming to Atlanta. I'm like, wait, 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 wait what? Am, wait, huh? <laughs> okay, hold on. Let mm-hmm. me see how, uh, what am I doing that weekend? <laughs> mm-hmm. So I literally, like, I never really followed up on there's a Jordan con until you guys. Yeah. I didn't even know it existed until listening to you guys the first time last year, and you were talking about 
in your episodes coming to Jordan Con and that was your goal. And I'm like, what the hell is Jordan Con? So, and then I felt so left out last year not being able to make it. So, like, I had, had tried to really plan to come this year. And, yeah, like, as you guys kind of saw in the Discord, I kept flopping back and forth between, yes, I'm coming. Ah, oh, crap, no, I'm not. Yes, I'm coming. Oh, no, I'm not. And then, yeah, it just worked out that I could. Did thankfully. you guys have a favorite thing you want to mention? Like a favorite event or panel or so far anyway? We're only approximately halfway um, through. So far, well, we just got out of Team Jordan, mm -hmm. which was excellent. Um, listening to Harriet just speak was really, you know, like you just, you just hear all of the memories that she's not saying and all of the experiences that they're not talking about. It's like, ah, I can't wait to read more about, you know, little interviews and stuff like that they didn't bring up. Um, my favorite thing has been the conversations with, like, the Watt Spoilers people. Like, and I, I don't just mean Seth and Patrick. Yeah, I guess, I mean, aside from all of us being awesome. Awesome as well. <laughs> but, like, just getting to, like, put faces to names and, mm -hmm. you know, talk to people and have conversations. Be able to make, like, weird references. Like, I was telling Kelsey earlier, my significant other, who's only read up to book three, was watching me get dressed. And when I took off some jewelry to not lose it at the con... Um, Mark was like, oh, well, you could put on some rings or um, earrings or something to compensate for taking off that jewelry. And they were joking, but I was just like, no, <laughs> because I'm dressed as a generic wise one, and that would put me into Savannah territory. And like, <laughs> no. Um, but so, you know, just being able to make random comments like that mm -hmm. is fun and have everyone know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Wheel of Time Spoilers podcast. Rate us in the Apple Podcast app or support us on Patreon. Is that good enough?